Okay, so functions. A function, it, if an equation has two variables, x and y, and it yields precisely one value of y for each value of x, we say y is a function of x. All right? So if I have, like, the equation y equals x plus 3, when you put any value of x in, what do you get? So, like, if I put a 3 in for this, I only get one answer, right? If I put a 3 in for x. Now, if I said y equals square root of x, and I used, say, square root of 4, what are my answer? Positive 2 and a negative 2. I get two answers for y. And this is what would be considered not a function, okay? So that's what they're saying there when they say if you've put in a value of x, you only get one value of y coming out, okay? So y equals f of x indicates y is a function of x and it's readed, readed, it's read f of x. So when you hear me say f of x, that's what I'm talking about, okay? The formula y equals 2.5x is the same as saying f of x equals 2.5x. So in other words, if I were to say xy for one of my ordered pairs is the same as saying x f of x for my other ordered pair. So one of the things that your homework might ask you is what is the difference between these two relations? y equals 2x and y equals 2x plus 4. So, so far, we have been using t tables, so I'm going to use what I would consider a double t table to find my points for both of these relations, okay? So, I'm going to pick three points. We'll say negative 2, 0, and 2. Those seem to be pretty easy points to use. And put them in for each one. So, for 2x, and for 2x plus 4. If I put a negative 2 for x, what do I get right here? Negative 4. And this one, I would get 0, and then this one, I get 4. On the second one, if I put in negative 2 for x, I would get 0 for the first one, 4 for the second, and 8, right? eight for the last one. So let's go through and actually graph these at this point and let's compare. So the first one I have negative two, negative four. Negative two, negative four is right here is for my first one. Zero, zero, and two positive four. If I draw a line through that, I have this. Okay? Let's try it for the second one now. Negative 2, 0. So at this point, I would start here. Oh, negative 2. Go over 2, down nothing right here. And 0, positive 4. And then 2, positive 8. So that would be way up here. Draw my line. I'm going to use green for this one because I had green points. What do you guys notice about these two lines? They're parallel, right? They're parallel. They never cross anywhere. So, so some ways to describe it is you could say they're parallel. You could spell it. Uh, they, um, they have the same slope which we'll talk about later in the chapter. And you could also say the green line is the same as the red line, it's just raised by how much? How much did it go to upwards? Four, okay? So green really equals red plus four, right? So those are some things you could say about it. What is a vertical line test? Well, basically, you can um, fa uh, graph any kind of a, 
of a graph, say this one. And you can check to see if it's a function or not by drawing a vertical line. And I'm going to use a dotted line here and just make it vertical through several points. If it only goes through at one point, if it intersects the graph at one point, then it's a function. So in a sense, if you just grab that line and move it from side to side, notice that no matter where I put that line, it only crosses at one point. Okay, so that is a function. But if I were to grab this one and turn it this way, and then grab my vertical line, notice that no matter where I put it, only one place it crosses at one spot. The rest of it, it crosses how many spots? Two. So is this a function? No. This one is not a function. We have um, basically one, a couple of the story problems in the chapters. We're going to be interpreting graphs. And this one is about a drug injection. When a person receives a drug injection into a muscle, the concentration of the drug in the body, measured in milligrams per 100 milliliters, depends on the time elapsed after the injection. Measured in hours, the figure shows the graph of the drug concentration over time where X represents hours after the injection and Y represents the drug concentration at time X. During which period of time is the drug concentration increasing? What do you guys think? To when? Yeah, one to three. If I were to draw a line going straight up here, it seems like that at three hours. So it is increasing from zero to three hours. Okay, during which period of time is the drug decreasing? 3 to 12, right? Or you can even argue 13 here. Okay, C, when is the drug drug's maximum concentration? At 3 hours, but um, what is the drug's max? Yeah, right here, right? 0 0.05, and you can Okay, and when does it occur? Three hours. What happens at the end of 13 hours? Yeah, it's at zero again. So zero amount of drug. Okay, and E. Yes, it passes the vertical line test. That's why we can tell it's a function. If I'm going to grab my vertical line here, I can move it side to side and notice that it only crosses once. Okay? All right, so that is it for today. Your assignment is on the board.